And let's do this example here from Kraft and Hawkins. You have to calculate the water influx as a function of time. You have a uh, radius of reservoir H F K, which is K V over K H. You have viscosity and your R E is uh, infinity. K is 50, porosity 0.1 and C T is uh, 8 times 10 to the power of minus 6 psi 1 over psi so let's do this in excel first i just plug in what i have 2000 and re is infinity so when RE is infinity, RD is also infinity and H is 200, K is 50, FK is 0 0.04, porosity 0 0.1, viscosity 0 0.395, CT is 8E minus 6. And let's calculate our U. Okay, U equals to 1.119 times porosity times H times CT times rr squared and you will get seven hundred and sixteen and we will calculate for other parameter and in the question it is they give you the time and the average boundary pressure so i just put my time here in this and my average uh, reservoir pressure here first we have to change the time to hours so time equal to days times 24 and then write this down for td We'll use this equation. So TD equals to bracket 2.637 E minus 4 times K times T divided by porosity times viscosity times compressibility r radius squared and make sure these are all the same values so it's constant you put a dollar sign Then you just drag this down and you will get your TD. And let's check the value. Okay, so we get the same TD as the answer. Now we will find WED. From the table, we have the table here. So for this one, the first one will be 0 and the second one we have TD 7.51 so 7.5 is between 7 and 8 so we use this for um, 
infinite aquifer. So infinite aquifer. Well, first we have to calculate our ZD2. So add another one, ZD. And ZD. So for ZD, your Z is actually, you can use your height, which is 200. So 200 over RR, 2000, times FK, this one, to the power of 0 0.5. Brackets. So you will get your ZD zero point five. So we will open the the table. So we will use the because we have infinite aquifer. We use the table for infinite aquifer. And the first is seven point five one. And we will look at Z equal to point five. And between seven and eight, so we for this one, we have to interpolate. So I just for interpolating in Excel, you can just do this forecast. You select. Um, Your X number is 7.51, so it's in box E9. And then your known Y is this one. Oops, sorry. Your known Y is this one. And known X is this one. And you will get the answer. So for seven point five point is five point zero four. For fifteen, so fifteen point zero two, you can just take this value. It's close eight point three eight nine. 22, 22.53 you can interpolate. So I have my formula here, I just write 22 and 23. I want to find 22.53. Ten point eight two six eleven point two one nine. You get eleven point zero three. And then for thirty, just take this value.
Thirty seven point five five is between thirty seven and thirty eight sixteen point one eight one five and seventeen point one seven three seventeen point zero one for Forty five Fifty two and fifty three twenty two point zero four four twenty two point three eight three twenty two point two four and finally for sixty twenty four point seven two eight. Okay, so what's next? Next is the step pressure. To calculate the step pressure, so the first one is zero, and second one is uh, 22, which is just 3000 minus 2956 divided by 2. And if you look at our previous lecture slide, uh, you can use this equation. So the third value, P3, delta P3, is actually the difference between the G, uh, G17, the P3, and G2 divided by 2. Plus the difference between G15 and G16, which is uh, PI and P1 divided by 2. So just follow this equation. And if you see, the rest is also the same. So you just take uh, two steps divided by 2. And you will get this for step pressure. Next, we'll calculate the WERB. So, WERB will use this equation. So, equals to U, and U is constant, times delta P. times WED and you will get this value and let's check Seventy-nine. So it, they change the unit to MRB. So seventy-nine thousand to eighty-two. So I guess this is the cumulative. Let's try to find the cumulative here. Equals to zero. 
Uncle Stu. So this will be our cumulative water influx. There's some error in the um, lecture note calculations from the book, so we will use this value. And then we can construct the graph for dimensionless water influx, WED versus DD. And this graph will be this one. We can also do graph for cumulative water influx over time. So, it's a bit time. Cumulative 